All right, hey everybody, doing my first live. I am um so I started I wanted to do a sports talk for everybody just to get uh to give people something to do since there's no sports going on. I thought of this uh yesterday um just to talk about sports, potentially interview pro athletes since I have a, an awesome connection with uh other people and other sports uh so my first guest that it's going to be today hey kyle how are you it's going to be stephen fulton jr he's 18 and 0 he's currently the ibo super badminton weight champion uh so he'll be on shortly i i, I told him to to join whenever he's all ready um then my second guest is a awesome prospect in the welterweight division um his name's shenard scrap bunch he's eight and one He's got a awesome resume already, so we're going to hear from him shortly once I'm um, finished interviewing Stephen Fulton. So we're just waiting for Stephen to join, so feel, feel free to uh, get on. Let, let me know you're here. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Will. Hey, Tilo. Oh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, so we're just waiting for Stephen to join us, and then I'll start asking him a few questions about boxing and all. And then if you guys have any other questions, too, uh, you could feel free to... Uh, put him on here if he has time or if he wants to answer them. Uh, I'll let him uh, answer. Again, I, I wanted to start this uh, because, you know, sports is dead at the moment um, because, because of what's going on in the world, unfortunately. So I just want to give people something to watch and uh, hopefully bring joy. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Hey, Hale. Hey, Sean. What's up, Sean? How's that work going, okay? <laughs> yeah, the clock is the clock's broke behind me, so it's just uh, used for fashion. That's all. So I I don't know. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Hey, Sean O'Neill. How how are you? So I went on live a little early because I've never been on live before as much as I'm big with social media, um, just to get a feel for it. So this is definitely different uh, for sure to do a live because I'm usually used to just doing Insta stories and posting stuff. So, hey Hillman, how are you? Howdy. Hey Will Campbell, sorry I missed that earlier. What's 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 going on? Hope hope as well. All right, so we're just waiting for uh, Stephen to join us, and then we have Shenard Bunch, who's an awesome prospect from Trent, New Jersey. Uh, he will be joining probably within ten minutes. So like the interview's not going to be long, of course, because I, I I know that they have a busy schedule. I mean, even though uh, you know. They're uh, doing like family duties and all, so I don't want to keep them too long. So I'm just asking them simple questions, um, just to see how it goes. Hey, Shenard, I see you. Um, if Steven doesn't sign on and like two minutes um we could just start so i'm sure you've been on live all the time i've seen you with with your training stuff oh here here he is uh 
All right, it looks like Cool Boy's calling. Let's see. What's up? Yo, what's up, man? What's going on? Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, joining. How you are dealing with uh, being out of the gym and all? Does it suck? No, not really. Yeah. You know, at, at times it do, but at times it be like, man, as fighters, we be needing this break. And, oh, yeah? And, and also the world needed that break. So, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you again. So for my followers, so a lot of people I have are, like, different. So, like, a lot of, like, business people or people I like other sports. So this is Stephen Fulton Jr. He's currently the IBO Super Bantamweight Champion. He's 18-0 and 0 with eight knockouts. Even though he's got the eight knockouts, don't let that power fool you because I see him in all fight Isaac, and he, he delivered a bad bad body shot to him. Because <laughs> I punch him and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to ask you simple questions. It's not going to be, like, too too crazy and stuff, all right? No, you good. All right. Um, I'll tell you the crazy ones, too. The crazy ones, too? <laughs> yeah, I need the crazy ones, too. I want to have some fun. All right. Uh, so the first question is, what what a part of Philly are you from? I'm from West Philly. West Philly? Yeah. All right. So, like, I was, like, I, my mom, my mother and my father's from North Philadelphia. I was living down there until I was, like, six, seven. Okay. Like, then I moved to West Philly, and I spent, like, the remainder of my life in West Philly. But I was, like, back and forth from North to West. Gotcha. So okay. I was just clean West Philly. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, yeah, no, I thought you were from uh, North, so that's actually interesting to know that, yeah, that's that you what grew I'm up saying. in Because yeah. I, I lived, I, like, I, I actually started off in North first, moved to West, and went back to North. Gotcha, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just heavy out West as well, so. Gotcha. Um, what age did you start boxing? I started boxing at 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think 12. I wasn't that young, but I know, yeah. I know a lot of guys that started younger than that. And I wish I had a, but then again, I'm like, damn, I'm glad I did because I probably wouldn't have been boxing. Now. A lot of guys who, like, start too early, like, fall out, of the, fall out of love with the sport. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it looks like you didn't even miss miss a beat at all. But, I mean, like, the way you fight and all, like, defensively, offensively. So, you're a pretty sharp at your craft. No, I think. Um, so, why don't you tell us about your amateurs? Like, uh, did you do, like, an amateur uh, back background and get to travel and stuff? All right, yeah, so I started boxing, like, 08, if I'm not mistaken, to, like, the beginning of 2007, and, like, start fighting in 2008, I believe, so I won. So my first tournament, I won the silver gloves, then I won the ringside, then I won the junior golden gloves. So now 2014 comes along, I won, in the, I won the, the golden gloves, but before I won the golden gloves in 2013, I made it on a USA team. Oh, wow. Uh, silver, silver medalist. On a, uh, yeah, on a U USA team. So then I traveled to Russia. I went to uh, I went to Russia and fought at the World Combat Games. and got bronze. I fought at somebody that fought Gary Russell years ago. Like oh, years wow. Ago. Yeah, I got bronze. I lost to him. I got bronze. Then I went and fought in the WSB, World Series uh, Boxing, five rounds of no headgear. I went 2-1 in the WSB. I went to Italy. I fought somebody from Algeria and Argentina. And one of those fights is on YouTube, so. Oh, okay. Man. So you actually fought uh, Gary Russell Jr. Wow. No, I fought somebody that fought him. Oh, I, somebody I, that fought Gary Russell. Okay. Yeah. I fought, gotcha. the, uh, I fought the youngest one. I fought the youngest Russell, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then this this leads to my next question. So, so your first pro fight, you actually decided to go pro, and your first fight was in Connecticut. October yeah. 4, 2014. So what type of nerve did you feel, or or was it like everyday business? It was like everyday business, but at the same time, you know, the nerves definitely going to run run in there. But it was it was new to me, so I definitely was nervous. I still get nervous before fights. Like, I, oh, yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy the nervous part. Like, I, I, I anticipate on being nervous. I got you, yeah. Yeah, no, I've always I wanted to know, like, uh, just le leading up to a fight, like, like, do you feel like a little nervous, or do you feel like you're you're ready to rip the guy's head off? It'd be both. It'd be both? But it'd be mainly the, the nerves, you know. Gotcha. Sometimes, like, things don't be going right in your dressing room. A lot of bullshit be happening, and a lot right. of bull, dumb stuff be happening. So a lot of fighters might may mentally dis get, get disconnected from the fight. 
I just be like, all right, watch this. I'm just gonna beat him the fuck up. Now, nice. Watch this. And nobody gonna stop me if I get dirty, and I'm just gonna get dirty. And that's right. the, that's the type of mind concept you have to have in this type of sport. So, gotcha. And then, um, so my next question is, so you went pro in 2014. Just, just uh, go back to another question. Um, when, when did you know that you had the stuff to go pro? Like, did you feel comfortable after like a certain amount of fights that that you're ready to jump from amateur to pro? I knew that when I was in the amateurs. When I decided, like, when, once once they made it the rule that the amateurs are gonna be fighting the nationals without head gear, I said, all right, yeah, I'm about to turn up. I said, that's what I wanted. Because it separated the men from the boys. It separated right. the, the ones that were so-called good as soon as they took their hair off. They ain't had no heart. They, they just, so it separated the men from the boys, girl. And that's what I wanted. That's why I needed that separation. To, 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 it was so many good talent, so much good talent out there that I had to find. I needed something like that to separate me from the rest of them. So that's what I did. A lot of guys that I grew up with in gotcha. Africa, no longer, you know, fighting. Or their career just ain't where it's supposed to be at. Okay, um, so the next next question for you is so so you won your belt last last May, which was awesome because Philly went went down to Virginia and just took everyone's belt. So like J J Rock beat Nerd, and then you you wound up beating Paulus. How how special was that for you to go down to Virginia and take his belt and bring it back to Philly? It was a, it was good, you know. That was my first that was my first title fight, so it was yeah. Uh, it was real good. They gave my first opportunity, so shout out to the IBL and That's shout out awesome. to the WBL because we got some things in work right now. Once this coronavirus stuff go down, it's, right. it's definitely going down. Yeah. Um, and then, do you credit training with Carl Frampton? Now, I got to meet Carl in August before he had that freak injury in the uh, hotel wherever he broke his hand. Um, mm -hmm. Hell. How much do you credit just just learning stuff and just like picking up stuff from a from a champion like Carl Frampton? Is is it cool to spar with him and 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 learn some stuff? Yeah, that's my man. That's my man. I, I like I like him a lot. That's my that's my, like I can hit him up and text him on a regular. Like, that's my man. That's awesome. Like, but when he had the free accident, we actually was sparring in. Like, I was working with him for that in Philly, out South Philadelphia. Yeah. So and then I just recently worked with him for his uh, last fight out in Vegas. And I worked with him when he fought against uh, Donair. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's my man. That's awesome. Yeah, when I uh, met met him, uh, he was at some type of uh, Irish club. So they are doing, like, a meet and greet for him. And he spoke so highly of you. Just that's like how, man. yeah, he, <laughs> he spoke really highly of you. So I was like, all right, I'm about to start watching uh, Cool cool Boy then, <laughs> for, for sure. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he takes me. He takes me. He my biggest uh, UK promoter. <laughs> yeah, that's my man. That's awesome. Yeah, every time I got a fight coming up, he promote me out there though. Like, oh, really, that's yeah. Social media, everything. That's my man. That is a lot of love. Awesome. So shout out to Carl Frank. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shout and out. His fight that he about to have coming up soon. Once this stuff clear up. Yeah. Um. So what's your future goals? So like I know like once once this coronavirus <laughs> clears up and, and then you had an awesome victory at the Barclays Center in late uh, January. Uh, so what's your future? Because I know uh, I know you pulled up on uh, Brandon Figueroa after that fight in August, but it seems like his people are kind of hiding him a little bit. So so what's, <laughs> what's your goal for the rest of the year? All right, look. I ain't the boy that be like, oh, man, we working on this, man. Listen, I'm going to tell you what we working on. Le uh, Angelo Leo supposedly is what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm hearing. But – Okay. We'll see how things go. You know, he with the money team. He's like 18, 19, and all as well. This will be like the eighth undefeated fighter if we if we get this complete and signed and everything. The money ain't going to be no issue, you know. Right, so, yeah, of course. That's around. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I said, that ain't going to be no issue, but you know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to fighting him, and that's who I want to fight. Cool. And if not, then uh, time is war. We can, man, him, man, him can get it on. Okay. And if not, then you know whoever they call the, this monster after he done, we man him to get it on. <laughs> and if not, uh, Louis Neary, man him to get it on. Love and it. And then if not, then I can go back to Brandon Figueroa if they not. You know what I'm saying with the BS. And if not, then tell Ring it down to move up. I love it. Say this is for for everyone watching. This this is why I love Philly fighters. 
We're not afraid of anything, and they and they will fight anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And, and it's the difference between being a free. It ain't that I'm a free. I just know I can beat these guys. And right, yeah, think yeah. Otherwise, then put me in the fucking ring with you. Yeah. If you otherwise, then come on, let's see what's up. We're going to see who the smartest. We're definitely going to see who the toughest, and we're definitely going to see who the strongest. So, right. So, I love it. With me. Yeah. Would you eventually try to move up, or do you feel really comfortable fighting at the uh, Bantam? I want, I want, I want to be undisputed down here first. Okay. I can move up or stay here. And that's the thing. I, I only ain't been talking about moving up yet because the, the fans ain't been talking about moving up yet. So once they right. start making those, then I start hop, then I then I start punching on the one twenty six pounders. Other than okay. that, I'm, I'm gonna stay where I'm at for right now. Love it. And All I'm right. Making, and I'm making money down here as if I'm a one twenty six pounder. Yeah. It don't even matter. All right, so I got two more questions, and then I'm gonna let you go. Um, so the uh, the first one is, what is what is your workout regimen like for like people to know like what's it like to cut weight and what type of foods do you gotta uh, eat or do you cut out of your diet? All right, so when I got a fight coming up, I work out like six times a day. I get off on Sundays. I try to get in the gym early, around like eleven, twelve ish, one, one latest. Uh, I run every time before I go to before I start my workout. I run a couple little miles, get me warm, get me get me in my sweat. Lose weight and start running, get me sweating. So uh, as far as dieting, I eat whatever I want. Okay. I just work out hard. I just work. I just work out hard and shit. I just eat whatever I want though, but I work out hard twenty four seven. I just work out hard. I eat whatever I want. Nice. So I just work out hard. So I don't really diet. Like, a lot of people really have to, like, cut down. But I drink a lot of water. Like, lots of yeah, water. Okay. Like, like, three, like, a month. I can, I, I can train for a whole month. And then the second month, the month before I fight or the month of the fight, I work on my weight that whole month because I already put it on the hard work that, that month before. You know, so this yeah. then the, the month of the fight is all about weight. Bring it down the right way, how I feel, how my body feeling. It'd be all about that. So that's how I go about it. Nice. Yeah, you uh, you, you uh, really threw me off with saying that you eat whatever you want, but you keep your body right with like the condition all awesome. Yeah. And that's yeah. cool. A lot of people can't eat what they want. Right, know? yeah. I eat what True. I want, and I, but I just work out, work, that, work it off. Uh, that's, that's awesome. All right, and then, and then my last question for you Um. Now, would you like to have a title defense in Philly, or or do you feel like that would be too much of a distraction for you to have your training camp here and then the fight at like Temple or something? No, no, that ain't no distraction at all. Honestly, my what I want to do is I want to win this belt wherever we gonna fight at, right? Okay. And I don't want to straight come home and defend it. I want to defend it somewhere else. And I want I want to whoever I fight next, I want to defend it in his hometown. Love and it. then I want to come back and, and defend it in my hometown. That's how I want to do it. All right. Cool. Thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate your time. Um, so I first met Stephen. Uh, we were at Temple, and we were at the Better B. Evan Bosnick fight, and he was he, actually he, cool enough to take a pic with me. He lying. We was at the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we were uh, throwing bands. <laughs> That's funny. Well, oh, thank you so that. much, and I uh, hope hope everything's well with you. And I hope I hope you're back in the gym soon. All right, likewise. All right, cool, man. I'll see you. All right. All right. So that was Stephen Fulton Jr. Uh, what a what a great guest. Um, so we got to learn a little bit about him. Which what was uh, really interesting was that he said that. He could be really dominant at his weight division, and he could eat whatever he wants, and it's all about training and stuff, which is really crazy. Um, so, Shenard, I see that you're commenting. If you're still on, you can request to uh, be on my live and just uh, give me a call. Uh, 